Vietnam is one of the cheapest countries in the world. If we take it back to 1975, Vietnam just emerged from its 20 year long war in economic distress. Its economy grappled with significant challenges in manufacturing, debt issues, and escalating inflation rates. But Vietnam has always displayed resilience. And if you fast forward to today, the country has been having rapid economic growth, making them now the fastest growing economy in Southeast Asia. So I've been to Vietnam four times now, and it truly is one of my top five favorite countries in the entire world. From its delicious cuisine, avatar-like landscapes, and it being very affordable. So we just got three beers each, so six beers total, and it came out to 30,000 dong, which is just over one dollar. That's pretty good. Tastes better than a $10 beer in New York City. <laughs> I've stayed in hostels in Vietnam that were under $5 per night. So for under $5, this is nice. Check out how clean this is. Freshly washed sheets. You have your own outlet right here so you can charge everything. And then you have this curtain. So it's like your own little room. Every bed that we've stayed in so far, has been like rock hard and it's like, okay, whatever. Dude, there's some bounce on these. The boy's gonna sleep great tonight to staying in hotels that were under $100 per night that were literally a gold palace. I can get used to this. This is living like a king. <music> to even staying on this massive yacht in Halong Bay for about $350 per night, where you get to sail around one of the seven wonders of the world all on this insane ship. And after traveling to over 60 countries, my number one favorite thing I have ever done in the entire world has been the Ha Zhang Loop. For five days, my two friends and I rode around in a loop where you're on the border of Vietnam and China. The landscapes are unbelievable and is the experience of a lifetime. And to sleep, you stay in small villages and stay in the coolest homestays. And if you're lucky, they'll even invite you into their home for dinner. So this is Hi, Tuan. Everyone. Is this your hostel? Yeah, my homestay. Yep. Off to Let's Tuan's go, parents' guys. house we go. Let's go, guys. I was not expecting this. This is so cool. <laughs> so Tuan over here told us something about Vietnamese culture, which is how you don't leave unless you're drunk. Is that what it is? <laughs> you no can't... drunk, no go home. You must drink one by one. One by one? Uh, everybody over here. Guys, we are on shot number like 15. We have, we have 20 more. Just started. <laughs> But now, one of the main reasons why I love Vietnam is because of the people. They truly have the kindest and funniest people in the world. Hi, Lee from Hanoi Backpacker Sweet House. Yes, Hanoi Backpacker Sweet House. And I am Lee. Lee. Handsome man. Handsome man. <laughs> strong handsome man. A strong man and handsome man. <laughs> yes. He's got a point. Is a room today. <laughs> You know, it's a man in Vietnam a little bit crazy, but very funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love this place already. Uh, I love it. I remember my friend and I randomly met a local on the street by the name of Bing, who just invited us into his house. So we met one of the locals, very friendly. What's your name? Uh, Bing. Bing. Yeah. Bing. Bing. Yeah. I I'm stay here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come to me. All right. Okay. Let's <laughs> <Okay>. here. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just taking pictures in the middle of the street trying to get a, uh, a quick picture and Bing came up to us, he got out of the car behind us and now we're going to his home for a drink. <laughs> My house! Okay, please. Nice home. Oh, okay. Wow, Bing is an art collector. Check this out, he has this gold statue. <laughs> of himself. This is beautiful. Ah. Bye, Bing. Bye. It was nice to meet you. Thank you for welcoming us okay. to Hanoi. See you okay. next time. 
Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> So right now, Vietnam is the third largest exporter in textiles and garments, and then the second largest exporter in coffee. It's worth traveling just to this country for the coffee. It is that different and that delicious. They use a Robusta bean, which is completely different than what you'll get at Starbucks or other chain cafes. So if you are in Vietnam, just go to every coffee shop you can. They are everywhere, probably like five on every block at least. So. Definitely try out the Vietnamese iced coffee. You get it with condensed milk and it's just so good. So with Vietnam marketing themselves as being very affordable and the perfect destination for any budget, they welcome over 18 million tourists every year. And while tourism is a major component in Vietnam's economy and GDP, the thing that has been a real game changer is technology. So right now, I am on my way to Times Square to go to an event for the first ever company from Vietnam to be listed on the NASDAQ. And the company is surprisingly not a Vietnamese coffee company, but rather a technology company. So I'm here in Times Square because today, VinFest is going public which is so awesome to be a part of this Vietnamese history and witness the first ever Vietnamese company to IPO here in America. And I think this truly just goes to show the advancement that Vietnam is making and the statement it's making here in the US. They're ready to hang with the big dogs. So to celebrate, we're gonna get some Vietnamese coffee. I love that they brought the Vietnamese traditions here to the US too. So this model right here is the VF8, and this is their base model here in the US, and goes for $46,000, which relative to other EV cars, seems like a great price. Let's take a look inside. Here, we got a massive screen. Okay, you can see here, like, uh, you can control the AC here, right? Mm -hmm. And here, that's a heating and ventilation. Like, For the both rows, you can yeah. control it. Yeah, wow. you can control it right here. So you can pretty much do everything from this right here. This is mission control. Yeah, yeah. Getting to explore this car, I feel like I'm really understanding how technologically advanced Vietnam is and how they put so much of that technology into this VinFast car. I gotta add, it is very comfortable. Chris, how is it back there in the back seat? For a tall guy like me, I have plenty of room. I could probably take a nap on this entire back seat. You know, I'm very excited to be working with VinFast because I want to manifest this. Chris, you and I yeah. are going to be taking some type of VinFast automobile through Vietnam. Rip, ripping through the streets of Vietnam in VinFast? That's what I'm hoping for. VinFast, oh, yeah. if you're watching this, let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to Vietnam. At the same time, they're gonna like, do we really let these two guys on the loose <laughs> in Vietnam with our vehicles? Yes, yes you should. Now what I find so incredibly impressive about VinFast is the speed and perseverance they had to defy the industry norms. Since first of all, they turned this swampland in Vietnam into a state-of-the-art automotive factory and launched their first three car models all in a mere 21 months which is just mind-blowing to think how quickly they were able to go from research and development to product launch, to where they're now even capable of manufacturing hundreds of thousands of vehicles per year, with their body shop being 100% automated and looks like the place where they built Optimus Prime. And now, VinFast just announced how they will be building their new manufacturing plant in North Carolina, and it's just super exciting to see a Vietnamese company expand so rapidly. Hey Brad, yeah, can you put in an uh, order for 100 shares of VinFast? So a lot of the early investors and a lot of super successful entrepreneurs from Vietnam are here today to celebrate VinFast going public. So we're gonna try and get a hold of a couple of them and, and talk to them about why and how Vietnam is having this rapid growth in its economy and business. My name is Chiu Lee from uh, Lee Sandwiches. Uh, we have about 75 stores in the US. What was it like being from Vietnam and bringing banh mi, which is one of my, my favorite foods. Thank you. As a young person, 
moving to the U.S. from Vietnam to start a business? Right, U.S. 1979. I work at food truck and I learned how to sell food and I make ban mi and coffee. What was your motivation to try and be an entrepreneur here in America from Vietnam? So when we come here, you know, it's a land opportunity. Yeah. We work very hard, you know, with the family. How does it feel for you to see the first ever Vietnamese company to now be listed as a public company in the U.S. Oh, I'm uh, very excited. You know, I'm the first customer too. Yeah. Uh, now I uh, have Tesla. Now I ride Vinfast every day. Vinfast to work right every now. day. Yeah. Every day. You were the first hours. customer. Yes. Does it make you feel really proud to be Vietnamese to see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The Vinfast, the first one. But yeah. Malcolm. When did you move from Vietnam to America? Oh, that's a long time ago. Maybe long time ago. Forty-eight <laughs> years ago. Wow. Was it difficult? For you to to get a start here in America from yes, Vietnam? Yes, from the, from the from the very beginning, it's very very difficult. We start from zero with a job that nobody wants, like a janitor. You started as a janitor. As a janitor, and then uh, we save money and we can buy a house and we uh, we finance the house and then do business. <laughs> That's insane. So yeah. moved from Vietnam, right. became a janitor, and worked your way out right. to owning a mall. Yeah. I know right now Vietnam is having crazy economic growth in business and technology. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is? I think hard working. Hard working. Hard working. Hard working and have um, ambition. Ambitious. The owner, the founder of this company, he is a Vietnamese refugee himself. But he worked his way in Ukraine, and he come back to Vietnam to do business. Wow. Yeah. Now, I didn't even know this, but the founder of Infast, who is the richest person in Vietnam, got his start when he moved to Ukraine and started an instant noodle business that he then sold to Nestle for a reported $150 million. And following his exit, he then moved back to Vietnam to start what is now known today as Vin Group and became Vietnam's first ever billionaire. After diving deeper into Vietnam's history, I've come to realize that the Vietnamese have always been extremely hardworking and relentless, which makes sense why their country is currently having this rapid economic growth. I am super excited to see Vietnam continue to push the limits of technology and business and look forward to seeing what they have in store next. Thank you again to VinFans for making this video possible, and until next week, let's get out and get busy in the next one.